As sea levels rise each year, nations must formulate plans to counteract the incoming floods. Welcome to Science Dose. Today, we're talking about Venice's Moes Project. What the Moes Barrier Project is, at its core, is a series of interlocking floodgates that are positioned at the three sea entrances to the Venice Lagoon. They are normally fully submerged, but can be activated to rise above the sea level, essentially cutting Venice off from the sea. Take for example this clip right here. Here I'll show you that when you dump a bunch of water with a barrier between it and another location, the sea level will not equal out at all. These barriers began production in 2003 and are nearing completion at the time of this video. Their purpose is to protect Venice from floods and how they do so is pretty cool. So for a lot of this next section, we'll be looking at the flowchart on the operation of the Mohs barrier. This chart is a guide that explains when the floodgates should be lowered and when they should be raised. So let's start before the flood. The gates work in conjunction with meteorologists to preemptively determine when to activate. Right here, we see H of six hours, which means if they predict a certain amount of rain within six hours, they'll go into this sort of yellow alert state. If the flood is going to be particularly high or a particularly long flood, Venice will raise its barrier at the slightest inkling of a flood. If not, they'll continue monitoring until they're four hours away from flooding. This is where it gets a little more wibbly wobbly on exactly what level the water has to be. They use factors such as wind speed and exactly how much rain they expect to determine if they're going to raise or lower the gates. The remaining half of the guideline is fairly simple. The only strange part is that since the model can be applied at any time, even during a current high tide event, some of the procedures may say to set the barrier into a state it is already in, which means just keep it in the state it currently is. Now that we've learned about the operation of the barrier, let's move into some deeper questions about does it work, how does it affect the environment, how does it impact Venice, and what can be done to improve the project. According to Professor Uma Geyser, who is a PhD in physics, there are two major problems with the Mohs barrier. When he was doing predictive modeling, there were a number of occurrences where a high tide entered the lagoon. All of these were caused by one of the two major problems. The first being that sometimes meteorologists were off, causing the gates not to rise in time and allowing water to flood into Venice. The second major problem was that they measured water at a single point. On especially windy days, water could be higher in one section of Venice and not in the area where they measured the water which simply meant that the Mohs barriers would never be deployed to prevent the floods. Now, even with these two major issues, Venice is still better off with the barriers, and luckily, these barriers aren't probably going to hurt the environment. At the current global sea level, Standish, a professor at the University of Iowa, believes there isn't any major damage done to the environment by the Mohs project beyond the raw materials used to create it. There really isn't much to say about this topic in today's video, except two quotes by him. The first one being, with a possible sea level rise of 10 centimeters between 2030 and 2100, the gates would block the sea from the lagoon 30 times a year. By this time, some effect on the natural system of the lagoon may become measurable, although it is expected to be small. The second quote is dealing with a larger than 10 centimeter rise, doubling it, where he says, the experts did foresee a measurable effect on the environment if the sea level rises by 20 centimeters, leading to 70 gate closures a year, which could happen by 2050 with a pessimistic scenario. Beyond maintenance, the barriers do cost Venice even after their production. This is because they cause ships to be delayed or kept out at sea while the barriers are up. The exact amount of money it's going to cost Venice in the coming years changes based on a couple of variables. One of which we'll get into later, and the other one we're going to talk about right now. The question I have is, is Venice going to continue to grow in tourism or stay stagnant? If you assume that it's going to stay stagnant, the Mohs barriers will cost Venice about 550,000 pounds a year. Or, if you assume Venice is going to grow, it would cost them 1.3 million pounds per year. But that's about it. That is the only real lasting cost beyond maintenance that Venice will have to keep 
the most barriers up and running. So I voiced some issues, but that doesn't mean I don't have any suggestions on how to fix them. Boomgeiser has solutions to the problems he brought up with the Mose barrier, which I agree with. His first suggestion was geared towards fixing the issue with flooding still getting through the barrier for various reasons. While he didn't suggest a change to the single measure point, I think it's pretty easy to figure out what to do there. One change he did suggest was closing the gates more liberally. This, according to his model, would cut down floods getting past the Mose barrier to near zero with a simple 10 centimeter security increment. However, if this was implemented, the issue of port activity being impeded would almost double to 17.8% of inbound movement and 19.7% of outbound movement being interrupted by the barrier, which in turn would cost Venice even more money. His solution to all this is to start port activity earlier in the day, before the tides roll in. He didn't suggest how to go out doing this, and it would be a great achievement to do so, but he still doesn't have a suggestion on how to get it done. However, getting it done would drastically lower the cost of impeding port traffic. The great thing with the Mose barrier is that from a mechanical standpoint, it looks like it's going to work. The rising and lowering of this deployable dam isn't the issue. When to raise and when to lower the dam is the issue at hand. The Mose project certainly isn't over when it comes into use. The world is watching Venice, and so am I. Thanks for watching. Toodles!